Hi everyone. This video is going to be some thoughts on the question of releasing your movies to YouTube. Now, this video was initially inspired by a recent discussion that I saw taking place about, you know, whether filmmakers should release their movies to YouTube or to a service like Amazon Prime or both, and with the advantages of this and that. And, um, but that's not really what interests me in this question. I'm not going to talk about that. Obviously, I'm coming from the perspective of somebody who does release his movies on YouTube, and I pretty much have almost since the beginning of the platform. Um, but rather, what I wanted to talk about was uh, what it means to create any video for YouTube or to put a video, you know, what basically how, how does the platform shape the content and our expectations of it. So I should also mention that this video and some and the thoughts that I'm going to be sharing in this uh, are also inspired by a, a project that I was a part of, a, a small part of, but uh, involved in about uh, a little over a decade ago called the Micro Movies Project. And the Micro Movies Project, I, I'm going to, uh, I'll just say this for now, uh, the Micro Movies Project was basically uh, an effort to think about creating films for the, the web, uh, ultra short form content. And how this, this, this was the idea of, um, uh, a lot of these ideas were written about by Lloyd Fonvier on his blog, uh, where he, he kind of, he came up with the idea about this project and uh, laid out a lot of the, the groundwork for it. Uh, now, before I get to that and, uh, and his ideas, I want to just kind of uh, mention something about uh, the early days of YouTube, when I, I'll always remember this, when I was in film school, uh, we had a, well, I was in a writing class. It was a, uh, in a broadcast and film writing class. And the professor made a comment one day, he said that if you want to write for YouTube, you don't need to be here. Now, he was, in one sense, he was right. But I also think that that attitude speaks to something of the uh, kind of negative view, the kind of condescending view that a lot of people had toward YouTube in the early days. This was actually in uh, early 2007. So the platform had actually been around for about two years at that point. But I, I was struck by that because I already by this point had started uploading my short films to YouTube uh, that I was making, you know, I had started making short films again when I was in film school, as I've mentioned, and had kind of gotten back to, to um, working in that short format after having, you know, tried making uh, some features over the past few, uh, several years before that. So I didn't quite agree with that state. I mean, I, I, I again, I, I think in one sense it's true that you really don't need the, uh, the kind of training that a film school provides in order to make videos for YouTube. I mean, I certainly agree with that. But, uh, but more, it was the kind of implicit, um, you know, condescending view of YouTube that I, I think I took more of an issue with. So when, when, the, when, when uh, Lloyd started this micro movies project, started writing, you know, his ideas about them, sharing his ideas about uh, making films for the web, uh, what, it, what it really boiled down to is this. Lloyd's idea was that if you look at, you have to look at what kind of content is doing well on YouTube and doing well on the web and to kind of think in those terms and adjust your expectations of what a movie can be. So, uh, for example, when I had started uploading my short films to YouTube in late 2006, it wasn't really, it didn't really yet have much of a place it felt like for, for filmmakers, right? It was a place where a new kind of content was emerging and new, new kinds of videos were, were, were emerging. Uh, you had the you know, the, certainly the popularity of vlogs, um, short, yeah, there were, there were the, uh, short, uh, viral videos, you know, they were, they could be, you know, videos that were funny, or, you know, people dancing, whatever, that there were different, um, different types of content that did, did well on YouTube, that it sort of, that the platform kind of developed a reputation for. And one of the things that's interesting about this, which I don't hear much anymore, is that in the early days of YouTube, there were a lot of people, a lot of, um, you know, writers and, and people with, uh, me, you know, media scholars, basically, who were making comparisons between YouTube and the early days of cinema. So if you 
go, you know, if you go back and look at the earliest films, there it was kind of this mix of all these different types of movies that were being made. Um, you, you can look at the, the films of the Lumiere brothers, you know, these kind of uh, slice of life, you know, views of uh, the, the ordinary and the routine, or, you know, traveling to far off places uh, and, and, and capturing those sites on film. And uh, then you had the, you know, the fantasy films of Georges Méliès. You had uh, dance films, you had animation, uh, you know, filmed vaudeville sketches, performers like Annie Oakley, all these different types of films uh, coming together, and subjects really coming together in these ultra short early films that played to audiences in, you know, in the very um, first movie screenings. So there was a lot of similarities being drawn at that time between, and, and I'm talking, uh, sorry, in the early days of YouTube, I mean, there were a lot of similarities being drawn between th that, those early years of cinema and the type of content that was starting to proliferate on YouTube. Now, Lloyd's idea was that just as out of that mix of, you know, all these different types of early films that eventually filmmakers, uh, early filmmakers, you know, found ways of using the medium to tell stories and to create narrative films and fiction films. And so his idea was, uh, and again, this would have been around, um, I believe it was late 2009 or early, certainly early 2010, uh, very early 2010 when, when he kind of put these ideas out there. His idea was that if you look at this kind of short form content that's doing well on YouTube, if you want to make movies, uh, you, you have to sort of look at how you can uh, adjust your expectations and the viewer's expectation to what they are going to see on YouTube. And so out of this, he, he came up with this idea of the micro movies. And the micro movies uh, were really geared towards creating you know, ultra short stories uh, for the web. Now, I think Lloyd was really onto something with this because I remember uh, it was in, the, in late 2009, I had attended a conference where the film scholar Rick Altman was, uh, it, was a, it was a conference on new media and specifically YouTube was a subject of discussion. And the film scholar Rick Altman made this uh, point about when, it, when a new platform, new, new technology or, or uh, medium emerges like YouTube and an online video, that it brings with it ex uh, new expectations of the type of content you're going to see on it. He said, otherwise what you're effectively doing is as, as he put it, pouring old wine into new wine skins. I always remember that he put it that way, uh, putting, uh, pouring old wine into new wine skins. And what he meant by this was taking old, you know, traditional forms of content and trying to shoehorn it into these new platforms, these new technologies. And he, you know, he basically felt that, uh, so, so his, his idea was, you know, that new technologies would bring new expectations with it and of the content. And that's what Lloyd uh, Fonvier, when he created this idea of the, the micro movies, I think that that's really, he was kind of thinking in those same terms because he's looking at, all right, what does well in this format? And how can, you know, how can filmmakers create content that is going to uh, work well in with this new technology within this new medium? And so I was part of, uh, there, were, there were a couple of different projects kind of done under this umbrella of the, the micro movies. I acted in one, a, a segment of a, of a little series called Noir Bars, which is on YouTube. And this was an effort to create kind of the kind of um, stories that you would see in a film noir movie, but in this ultra short, you know, like films that were like a, maybe like a minute or two long. And uh, Lloyd wrote most of these films himself, as far as I remember. And I directed one, a, a film um, from his own script. It was called The Wolfman in New York. And I think that film ran about two minutes as well. So for me, it was a real, it was, it was like a learning experience because I had been making, you know, 20 minute, uh, 15, 20 minute short films and had been uploading them to YouTube. And uh, I was still working in this model that I'd learned in film school, you know, the, the, like the 20 minute calling card short you know, the idea that you make a short film and then you're going to take it out there and kind of shop it around. It's going to show off what you can do and how, you, you know, you're going to show how you can make like a, like a little, little feature film almost. That's almost like the, the thinking is how you're going to take the, 
uh, you're going to take like a, almost like what should be a feature film, distill it down to 20 minutes or something that you can film on a, on a tight budget and a tight schedule and just sort of show off what you can do. I think that's like for a lot of people still to this day, I think when they think of short films, they think of the calling card short that, you know, would traditionally come out of film schools and would serve as a kind of calling card for a director to try to find work in the industry. But working, as part, working with this micro movies project, it got me thinking very differently about short form content. One of the things that uh, Lloyd, one of the ideas that he posited in one of his essays, and I don't remember the exact um, quote or even the exact context, but I believe he said something to the effect that with these micro movies, you could do a lot of world building. And what he meant by that was suggesting whole, you know, worlds off screen. So you, you make a very, um, you know, you might have a, a minute long film in a single location with a single actor, but then through the voiceover and through what you're describing through this kind of evocative uh, narration or creating a setting that's especially uh, in, in, intriguing in some way that you can kind of suggest whole things that are happening off screen. And it leaves a lot to the viewer's imagination. Now, uh, one of the other things that I learned about learned from making the the micro movie The Wolfman in New York is direct, and directing it. I mean, um, was that it really forced me to think more economically about storytelling. And so, in the past, where I was making, like I said, fifteen or twenty minute shorts with you know different locations and uh, casts of maybe you know two, three, four different people, uh, making micro movies actually helped get me thinking in terms of the one man or you know one. Uh, like like it's basically a, a single person production, right? So you would have a, a film where it was it was in, in some cases just me, you know, filming myself. I would write the script, I would direct it, and I've done you know a number of films like that over the years. So, uh, and of course, this idea also I have seen applied to folk filmmaking, which uh, I want to get to in a second. How I see these ideas relating, even though in some ways they're going to seem very different, but I think it's worth um, making like a comparison here. But uh, I, so I think that learning to make a movie uh, entirely on your own was something else that I really got out of participating in the micro movies projects. Now, the micro, so the thing with micro movies was there, you know, there was a, a lot of ideas that, that Lloyd and I kind of shared. I, I wrote some, some of these in my own blog and, you know, he, had, he wrote uh, about two or three different essays on the project on his own website. And uh, one of the things that kind of kept coming up in, in talking about this was the idea of um, creating a new, a new way of telling stories, a new way of making movies, and a new way of, for filmmakers to break away from the establishment and to use, you know, to really kind of harness the tools of web video, of online video, of YouTube, uh, to get their own films out there. And so this this actually kind of leads me into what I, I wanted to the connection I wanted to make with folk filmmaking, because it seems to me that despite the difference, uh, the obvious difference that you know the micro movies were about creating ultra short content, and folk filmmaking is about creating features for release on YouTube, I would actually argue that the length of the film aside, there's there's a there's a great deal in common between these two projects. I would say in fact that they almost share a common goal. So one of the things that, uh, as I mentioned, micro movies was kind of partly born out of this idea of these comparisons with early cinema when film was just uh, filmmakers were just learning to, or you know how to tell stories for the screen. And if you look back at those earliest narrative films, movies like The Great Train Robbery, you know they're roughly they're they're short they're short films. I mean that's probably one of the longer ones for its time. I mean at, at like ten fifteen minutes. But for the most part, you know these early story films were, were still quite short. But to me, what folk filmmaking represents is almost like the next step of that. So I think now, like in the last decade, uh, there have been a lot of changes, obviously, both with YouTube and with the idea of streaming video in general. I think one of the big changes that uh, really was not yet the case in 2010, I mean, it was, it was in its infancy, you know, streaming was kind of in its infancy as far as like Netflix and, you know, there really hadn't been as much done with that yet. So what's interesting about that to me is that as streaming, as commercial streaming services have really come to proliferate and, and kind of dominate in a lot of ways, um, they've brought with them this old content. 
So if you think about a lot of the services that are showing older movies, older you know network TV series, it, it's 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 that old that's that idea of the old wine being poured into the new wine skins, right? Uh, taking this old content and putting it into a new uh, a new medium. But YouTube has developed in some really interesting directions. Of course, the early uh, you know you still have the, the the viral videos, the vlogs certainly are still very popular. Uh, but I, I think what, one of the things that has changed is that it's become a lot more acceptable to release your film, you know, for, for narrative filmmakers to release their movies to, onto YouTube. So I think back to that, that story I told about being in film school and, and hearing that so, you know, somewhat disparaging remark about YouTube. Uh, I, I think it's come a long way since then because I think YouTube is now recognized as a viable platform um, by probably most people, I would say. Uh, I, I think about that recent interview that Quentin Tarantino did. He was talking about the uh, public domain movies that are available on YouTube, you know, from the 30s, 40s, 50s. But his point was that he's really excited by that, and he uh, encourages people to go onto YouTube to watch these movies. I mean, that's a, that's a very, that, that's a kind of a new idea, because in the early days of YouTube, there really weren't any films like that being uploaded, even, you know, older films and um, even it was it was kind of hard to find new independent um, movies being released straight to YouTube unless you know you're talking about some of the short films. So anyway, um, what I think is interesting though is that as audiences have become a lot more accustomed to seeing long form you know feature films uh, streaming on Netflix or you know any of these services, uh, any of these big commercial streaming platforms, I think it's, it's also helped kind of open up the idea of releasing feature films onto YouTube. And certainly, uh, you know, I, I, my thinking about this is inspired by, you know, what I've heard from uh, Dan Lotz and others talking about folk filmmaking, uh, that folk filmmaking is a continuation of the idea of, you know, completely independent, uh, completely DIY, low budget uh, filmmaking, but doing it at feature length. And I think in some ways this represents kind of like, a, 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 this is where, I, again, I see a connection with the micro movies, is that I think it's kind of like mirroring this this evolution of early cinema, that just as the idea of the micro movies was uh, how to tell stories in a format that, at least at that time, was what people were watching online, now I think it's, it's just like as short films grew to feature length um, in, in the, you know, in the 1910s, uh, now we're seeing the increasing acceptance of feature-length films on YouTube, and and where I where I really do think there's another connection here is that, uh, like with the Micro Movies Project, like what Lloyd uh, kind of out outlined with the Micro Movies Project, there is this idea of of creating a, um, you know, creating kind of a new system, a new way of thinking about releasing movies that that's going against that more uh, traditional uh, method, you know, so kind of circumventing Hollywood and and the you know the the, the major uh, film industry and making films your own way and getting them out there entirely on your own, re really retaining control over every aspect of the process. And uh, I've said this before, but I think it's worth repeating that, like just like I said with micro movies, that doing something that was only a minute or two long. You know, you really couldn't have gotten away with that in a film school setting. You would be expected to make a 15 or 20 minute calling card short that you could take out and shop around uh, for work in the industry. Well, you know, Mike with micro movies, you know, Lloyd looked at YouTube and he said, well, what's what's working in this format? What can we do differently? So then, you know, his idea of this ultra short uh, film was, and storytelling was was created out of that. And to me, what I see uh, with folk filmmaking, like I've said before, is that you can create feature-length films. You take this, take all the time you need to tell your story and get your ideas across, but you don't need to fill a theatrical slot. So you don't need to make a 90 or 100 minute or two hour film. If you want to make a 40 minute feature or a 50 or 60 minute feature, you're entirely free to do that. And I think, again, this is where looking at the uh, medium and thinking about how does the content, you know, how can you shape the content to fit the medium? Um, that's where this comes into play because, you know, again, if you were, if you were trying to, you know, years ago, trying to make a feature length film that you were going to sell and 
get distributed and ex uh, exhibited in theaters, you'd need to think about certain commercial expectations. People are paying their their ticket, uh, their 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 money for a ticket, and they expect to at least have a ninety minute show or you know a two hour show or whatever. Well, now with YouTube um, releasing the films on the YouTube for free, uh, that's no longer a consideration. If you want to give people a, a 40, 45 minute feature or whatever, you're completely free to do that. Um, you can take the time that you need to tell your story. So I think there's like this, I've said this before, but I think there is this kind of like a, um, a window in there of like the 40 to maybe 70 minute range or 80 minute range, something like that, that is uh, probably uh, realistically would be considered too short for a theatrical, you know, traditional theatrical release, but it's still feature length. It's still giving you extra time to, uh, to tell your story and to get your ideas across. And you're free to do that under releasing to YouTube. So I think that's something that, I think that's like an area that folk filmmaking has been really, uh, helpful in, in exploring is kind of thinking of feature films, but thinking of them outside of the confines of the, thea you know, traditional theatrical release. So anyway, these are just uh, these are some ideas that I had recently that I wanted to get get down here. Um, I'm sure I'll have more on the on the subject to share. I've been kind of revisiting the, the micro movies thing. I hadn't really thought about it for quite a while, and um, rereading some of Lloyd Fonvier's essays on his website really kind of kind of sparked some thinking about this. And as I was reading it again, I thought, you know, there really are a lot of connections here. I think between what he was talking about with the micro movies and what I'm hearing from the folk filmmaking community in terms of breaking away from traditional models. Um, again, I, I think, yes, obviously there is, there, you know, one is ultra short, one is features, there's that obvious difference. But like I said, I think that also reflects a kind of evolution that's taken place in online video over the last decade and, and what people will expect, uh, you know, to sit through on YouTube. I think it's great that it's, that it's gone in this direction. I think there's just more possibilities. Um, so now you've got, you know, short films and features and all sorts of different content on YouTube coexisting. So I think we're, we're only uh, richer for the fact that all of these opportunities are evolving out there. There's a lot of people doing interesting work in all these different formats and uh, it's really exciting to watch. But, um, Anyway, uh, that 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 pretty much uh, that's that's pretty much all I've got on this for right now. Like I said, I'm I I just think it's it's worth um, considering these different ideas together because there's a lot there's a lot of thinking that's uh, I I think can give a lot of ideas about not just folk filmmaking right now, feature filmmaking right now, but also where all of this might be going in the future. And I think those are also really interesting discussions to have. So anyway, um, like I said, if you tuned into the, this video thinking it was gonna be about comparing you know, this or that platform, like I said, I'm not uh, really interested so much in, in picking apart the different platforms. I'm, I'm just trying to look at how um, you know, all, of this, all of this content has, has grown and all of the possibilities that it affords and how, you know, creating a movie with the intention of releasing it on YouTube can actually uh, influence and shape the types of movies that are getting made. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I will talk to you later.